It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is the Happy Families Podcast. My name is Dr. Justin Coulson, the founder of Happy Families and the parenting expert on the hit TV show Parental Guidance Season 2, just weeks away to being on your screen. It's on Channel 9. Cannot wait for you to see Season 2. On the podcast today, I'm speaking to Amy taylor Cabaz. She's the founder of the Happy Mama Movement, author of Mama Rising, and she has her own podcast as well. Amy thinks deeply about what it means to be a mum in modern times, embracing the beautiful mess and, and the idea of what you might have heard of before. It's a word that doesn't get thrown around a lot. It's called matrescence. One of the biggest realizations I've had, not only in my own experience of motherhood over the last 15 years, but the thousands of mums that I've coached through my programs over the years, is that we never feel like we're on top of it. We never feel like we've nailed this parenting thing. In fact, that's not true. I have fleeting moments of thinking, oh, God, that's good, Amy. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. I've got it. I've got it. That's it. it. And then three seconds later, one of them will yell, one of them will do something, something will happen. And that feeling's gone again. So I think uh, it's come to the point where now I'm just at that point of acceptance that this is what it looks like and this is actually doing a great job, you know, hey, headscarf and all. I, I have a question for you, headscarf lady. How old were you when you finally made it to that point? Because this this is a critically important thing, I, I reckon. Uh, while you're pondering your answer, I, I'm – dangerously close to 50. I'm in my late 40s now. And again, I never, I I mean, those words just don't make sense to me. I'm so old that my eldest daughter, who's been married for three and a bit years, is uh, having serious conversations about um, her procreative capacity. And uh, I mean, I I, I don't even want to say the word, but I'm going to say it because we're on the summit. But the word (laughs) grandfather yeah, is starting to pop up in conversations. I mean, there's nothing, nothing happening yet, but the suggestion is the next couple of years. And and I mean, here's how old I am. The other night, so not, not long ago, we moved to the coast. A few months ago, we moved to the coast. And uh, great neighborhood, great community. Some people that we didn't know said, hey, why don't you come and have dinner with us on Friday night? So we went out for dinner just the other week. Uh, and we're sitting with these people. And they, they're definitely a couple of years older than us. And their kids are all adults. But they only had a couple of kids. And I mean, we've got a couple of adult kids now as well, three of them. And so uh, we didn't really think that there was much of a difference between us. And this is the terrifying thing. They don't look that much older than us. They're definitely older than us, maybe five, seven years older. She's 63 and he's 61. And I'm like, what am I going to dinner with 60 year olds for? What's happened to me? But but like it creeps up on us, doesn't it? So how old were you when you kind of went, this is kind of who I am uh, and the whole hot mess thing. I I just need to accept that this is what life actually is. It's a process of making it up as we go along, but hopefully getting better at the stuff we're making up because we get to experience more and more. When when did it really kind of start to click for you? My youngest is eight. I have three children. They're at the moment 14, 12 and eight. And I think when he was about four, three or four, the, I call it in my work, the inner mean mama, this internal dialogue that says, you're doing a bad job, you should be doing better, you're screwing this up, I can't do this anymore, that it's almost sometimes it's so unconscious we don't even realise we're telling ourselves. Um, I think it was about three year, three or four years into his life that I really started to be able to silence that in a consistent way. Is it still there? Yes, it was there yesterday. But I know how to recognise it. I know it's not my truth and I know how to speak back to it. But that took, I started that process when my first was born 14 years ago. It's taken me a really, really long time to turn that inner judgement off and silence it. I think now, and I can say this without ego and quite strongly, I know I'm a great mum to my kids, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. I just know that I'm doing the best I can every single day. And it's taken me a long time to feel confident in that. However, I'm still working much more strongly on feeling like less of a hot mess in other parts of my life. So it's like I shifted all my focus on to really taming that inner mean mama voice for many, many years. And because my kids are now at that beautiful age where we can have conversations and I can see that, you know what, 
they are growing into really great human beings. I think when they're really little, it's hard to know if you're doing a good job. It's hard to know whether those toddler tantrums are going to turn into a, a you know, an adolescent that, you know, breaks into homes and gets drunk. And, you know, you, it's harder to know you're on the right track when they're really little. Now that my kids are this age and we sit around the dinner table and have these amazing conversations, like it's my favourite part of parenthood to hear them talk about their worries about the planet, their reflections on what they saw on the news, their way that they're handling a difficult friendship at school, even my eight-year-old. You know, I can see, yeah, okay, we're on the right track. Other parts of my life like work, relationships, there's still an ongoing internal coaching that I have to do to just settle this perfectionist tendency I've always had ever since I was little about how perfectly I need to have this all done. I really like the idea of experience. As I'm hearing what you're reflecting, I mean, this is why I had six kids, right? We just keep on going till we get it right. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, but what we found is the more kids we've had and the more experience we've had with child rearing, the more comfortable we've become with what matters and what doesn't. The, the less th- that questioning, nagging, doubting voice has impact on us yes. and, and we become increasingly settled. Um, Amy, I've got a copy of your book, Mama Rising, but it's just out of reach on the floor behind me because when Kylie and I were recording a podcast the other day, she had it in the hand and she's placed it on the floor there. And I, I can't go, go gadget arms to get it. And I want to stay here in front of the, in front of the camera while I'm chatting with you. So I'm just going to need everyone to believe that you've written a book called Mama Rising and imagine that I'm holding it up for you. Let's, let's talk about this. Now, now this conversation as part of the Hot Mess Summit is probably geared more towards mums than dads, but I think dads will certainly learn and, and get great value out of this discussion. So um, dads, hang around for this one, please. Uh, I've got a handful of questions about what you've written in the book and a handful of questions about the whole subject of being a hot mess. So and then now that we know how old we are and how uh, we are all just making it up as we go along, I, I want to go back to the beginnings of parenthood for just a sec. As we, as we first become parents, we often come to it with the perfect image of what we think it should be. I know my perfect image was my kids will listen to me and do as they're told, which mm-hmm. was a disastrous approach to parenting. It didn't work very well at all. But you speak a lot about where that perfect image comes from mm. and how to change it. Can we just start there? Yes. I think it's so important for us to get a cultural and historical understanding of where we get these ideas from because, you know, whether you're our age, Justin, or younger, most women on the planet have been told since they were born that they could do anything that we are in the generation now of the feminist and that we now have choice, although it depends on where in the world you have that choice right now. But we have this ability to uh, be a mum and be something else. You know, I distinctly remember growing up feeling like I needed to never be just a mum. Being just a mum was a waste of my skills, my talents, my life because we were really raised in this era of uh, opportunity and the glass ceiling and, you know, smashing through the glass ceiling. But what that did to our generation and is still doing in a lot of ways is undervaluing motherhood. I'm so glad you said that because as you say, just a mum, I pause and Kylie only ever wanted to be a mum. Yeah. You know I mean? and, and I've worked with a lot of women who say that as well. Like, Amy, yeah. I actually did only ever want to be a mum, but I felt like that wasn't enough by others. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So no matter how you came to it, whether it's a surprising turn of events to want to be a mum so much because you thought you'd always be career-driven, or whether it's been ever since you were a little girl, you knew that motherhood was your thing. We come to this, and in the moment of becoming a mother, we experience what we know now as matrescence. It's this change in identity. It's not only a change in your brain and in your hormones and in your body, of course, but it's also a change in how you view the world, how you view yourself, your relationships, your economic status, your position in society, all of it. The best way to understand it is like matrescence is like adolescence. It's this period of becoming this new version of yourself. So just like a child doesn't wake up on its 13th birthday and is suddenly an adult, there's this period of, and you would know better than anyone, that it's actually almost a decade of brain changes, hormonal changes, but also personal changes of pushing back and questioning and and 
exploring different things and changing your mind about who you want to be and what you're here to do and this real transition period. And we know now that that's also what happens to a woman when she becomes a mother. And so if we are to, so for example, for me, I always thought that, yeah, I'd love to be a mum, but it will be something that I almost add to my life, but nothing else will change. You know, I'll still be, I know we laugh now. I, I was going to say famous last words, but yeah, nice yes, point. <laughs> literally it changed everything as yeah. it does for all of us, whether we're aware of it or not. But I thought it would be something I could almost add to my resume in the sense of I'll still work the way I've always worked. I remember my husband and I had a conversation when I was pregnant with our first baby. You know, this is not going to change us. This is not going to change our relationship. We made these commitments not to change. We were still going to be who we were. And that's literally impossible. Motherhood, parenthood, fatherhood changes you at your core and it makes you suddenly revalue everything. So if we are growing up in a period of time where being a parent is not valued, it's not seen, it's not celebrated, we have to justify ourselves to be able to put motherhood first or fatherhood first. And yet internally, this is exactly what's happened. You can feel this split within us. We can feel this, I'm not who I used to be. Suddenly, I don't want to go to work like I used to. Suddenly, the things that I thought were important just aren't important anymore. When I'm at work, I want to be at home with the baby. When I'm home with baby, I want to be at work because I feel like I'm invisible. We are in this period of matrescence, of these deep questioning of who we are. And it is very, very messy. It is I'm the just, definition of a hot mess. I'm just thinking this is a fundamental. About it. Yeah, it's a fundamental mm. identity issue, right? Absolutely. But but you you were, you were just starting to say, but we don't talk about it. We don't. And, <clears throat> you know, in my study and research around this, Justin, there's so much talk around that second wave of feminism in the 70s where we really empowered women to choose whether they wanted to be a mother or not and mother in their own way. And that's what we've been told. But actually, if you scratch the surface of any woman, whether she's a mother or not, and ask her about what her definition of a good mother is, it looks surprisingly like a 1950s version of a mother and a wife. We may externally say that we've released ourselves from that identity, but actually most of us still carry within us this assumption that we should love being a mum every minute of every day, that we should fall pregnant naturally and easily and birth naturally and breastfeed naturally, that we should be happy to sacrifice ourselves, make everything from scratch, you know, play all of the games, do all of the things. And if any of us aren't feeling that way, even if it's just for part of the time, we feel like we're a bad mum. And that's where this idea of the good mother theory comes from, that internally we may say outside Oh, you know, yes, I know I don't have to do it all and I can get help. But every single mum I've worked with over the years, Justin, feels bad about asking for help, feels like they should make the birthday cake from scratch, feels like they shouldn't be putting their kid in for extra hours at daycare. You know, there is this, again, inner mean mama voice, this internal good mother expectation that makes us feel really bad about the reality of the messiness of, of this time in our life. I love, I love what you're saying here. It reminds me so much of what I've said in the opening remarks to the summit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about the, the beautiful, beautiful mess effect, right? So we love each other's vulnerability. Oh, sorry, not each other's. We love it when other people are vulnerable. We love it when other people uh, ask for help. We love it when other people talk honestly about their body or about their failures as a parent. We love it when other people own their stuff, but we feel like we can't do it. We feel like it's fine for all of them to do it because they've actually got it together. And when they're highlighting that they've had a challenge, it's just because they had a challenge, whereas my life is challenged. Like there's there's something going on here with the whole, I mean, and that's why we're doing the Hot Mess Summit. But this, this good mother theory, it seems to be a, a, almost at the heart of our identity as parents and uh, it creates so much mother guilt, right? So much mother guilt. And, you know, I think in a way we're trying to break this. I love what you've just said because we're trying to break this down at a cultural sort of social media level in some accounts. Some accounts still very much hold up the perfect 
white family with the perfect white kitchen and the perfect white baby and the perfect white outfit. But that looks so good. <laughs> and it looks so good. And Gosh, you know, it looks good. <laughs> pretty much none of us are immune to looking at that and thinking, oh, but I totally agree. We, we forgive each other's messiness, but it actually has to start with forgiving our own messiness. And I think the biggest thing that I do in my work through this lens of matrescence is to break down that cultural assumption of who you're meant to be and what it's meant to look like and feel like. You know, there's this uh, another theory that I absolutely fell in love with when I was doing all of this research um, is the maternal mandate. So the maternal mandate is a is a description of, again, what women assume about themselves and the world assumes about women, that if you are born a woman and you are of a certain age, you should be wanting to have children. Once you have one, you should want more. You should fall pregnant easily and naturally. You should love every minute and all of that. And again, this is somehow what we're carrying. You know, ask any woman who is in a long-term relationship, someone's going to ask them, are you going to have a baby soon? Once they've had one baby, they're going to say, and when will you have the second one? You know, we continue to put these expectations on each other and ourselves. And the key to being okay with the mess, because it is a beautiful mess, is to realise, I think, one of the main important questions we can ask ourselves is, whose expectation is this? Where is this coming from? Because it might come from your mum and it might come from your mother's group. But I think it's also just as empowering to realise it comes from the culture that we've been brought up in that tells us we should be able to do it all. We should be able to have a great home, a great body, a great relationship, be a great mum, be great at work. And it's actually physically not possible to do that on our own the way that we're doing it at the moment. Something has to break. That was Amy Taylor Cabaz, the founder of the Happy Mama Movement and author of Mama Rising. I spoke to Amy as part of the Happy Families Hot Mess Summit. You can find out more about the Hot Mess Summit at happyfamilies.com.au. Just jump into the shop. That Hot Mess Summit is still available for purchase. And so many great conversations, so many incredibly intelligent and helpful people to help make our lives less of a hot mess, especially <laughs> especially the way things are going at the moment with um, – inflation and interest rates and all the stress in life and we're going to put all of amy's links in the show notes you can find more about her there you can also find like i said the hot mess summit on the happy families website the happy families podcast as always is produced by justin rulon from bridge media craig bruce is our executive producer and for more information about making your family happier we'd love for you to check out that hot mess summit at happyfamilies.com.au or visit us at our facebook page dr justin coulson's happy families 